All right, current location is back in New Jersey at my parents' place. I have to get all of these tools into the school bus because I'm repacking the bus. I'm on my way down to Florida and then into Georgia where I'm actually gonna be doing a build workshop um, teaching people how to build school buses. I don't think I announced it here on YouTube, but it was announced uh, about two weeks ago on my Instagram. Uh, unfortunately, by the time this video is out, uh, I'm pretty sure that the workshop's already been sold out, but there will be other ones in the future, so stay tuned on here or Instagram and I'll, I'll let you know when the next one's coming around. But I gotta get all these tools in this guy and get out of the cold. But after last week's video, when I was talking about my fun times in the snow and how much I enjoy it. And how this bus essentially is not really built for the winter very well. I got a lot of comments and emails about how to build a bus for the winter. So I figured today I would do a video on kind of the top things that I would suggest you do if you're trying to build a rig for winter. As I was saying, I want today to be a day where I just go through a list of things that I really think you should consider when building your rig. So let's get this thing set up and let's hop right on into it. I wanna go over heating, insulation, ways to stay warm, and things you wanna think about when looking into a vehicle. So the first thing that I wanna talk about is heating. There are many different ways to heat your rig, and this might be one of the most important things because you can put as much insulation as you want but if you don't have a way to actually create the heat, there's no reason to try to hold it in because you don't have any in the first place. Now in this bus, I'll just show you actually. In this bus, I have this propane heater right here. It's blowing out here and the intake is right there. Now this heater is runs on propane. It's a forced hot air heater. It's very efficient in terms of the burn. Propane is very clean. It has a vent on it so there's no condensation issues with this unit, but it uses a lot of propane and in my opinion is one of the more expensive ways to heat your rig while living on the road. Now there are other types of propane heaters out in the market that you can install, such as my friend Dean from the schoolie. He has a propane heater, but it is more of a residential style unit in which actually has a coil burn and then heats the space. This unit I don't really know the efficiency on, but it is an option you can look into. He does have a small unit in his hallway. All right, we gotta turn the lights on because it's getting a little dark in here. You know those winter days where it's just super cloudy and the sun just doesn't want to stay up, so that's a lot better. All right, another option that Dean actually uses in his school bus, this is his mini split, or a lot of people can use their air conditioners to run electric heat. So a lot of units have the ability to put a conversion kit in them, and your air conditioner can also be a heater in the winter. This is an option though that is mostly gonna be used if you're plugged in because of the power draw, but it can be a really effective way to heat, especially if you're trying to have an all-in-one type of unit. Now the next type of heat that I wanna talk about is gonna be diesel heat. This is the type of heat that I think I'm really interested in because you already have diesel on the vehicle typically, so you can just plug into your already existing vehicle tank and just use it as your fuel source. So because they're very, very efficient, many diesel heater units will run on about a liter a day and burn use and you can get ones that are forced hot air heaters and also water heaters. So that means you can put the small unit inside of a couch, a cabinet, under a chair, or you can put the water heater on an exterior use and then be able to pump hot water into radiant heat, into floor heating, into heaters that are already existing within the vehicle, or you can add other type of coil baseboard heating inside your rig. The last type of heat, which is also the hardest to control, is going to be a wood fireplace. They have phenomenal aesthetics. I love watching them, I love tending them, but they're really hard to keep going throughout the night and they're also not exactly the easiest to regulate temperature, but they are the most efficient way to heat in terms of cost. So if you're looking for an aesthetic for your bus, a supplement type of heat, and you're really just looking for a wood fireplace, there are many companies in the market now that build tiny fireplaces that are designed for tiny spaces. Now, once you figure out what type of heat you wanna put inside your bus to survive the winter, you're gonna to have to think about how you wanna keep that heat in. And really, there's two main ways that I'm gonna suggest that you insulate, even though there are many different options on the market. When you're doing bigger vehicles, buses, uh, tiny homes, not really as much vans, because vans you can get away with some of the aluminum reflectics and things, I highly suggest that you either spray foam or board insulate. Now, spray foam is gonna give you a much better R value and it's gonna give you a much better seal overall, 
but it is a more expensive and typically harder option to get. Now, you can do board insulation, which is gonna be a little bit less expensive, but unless you're doing a really good tape and foil job, you might possibly have a bit of gaps within your insulation and it's not gonna be as efficient. But both these options are gonna be really good and I highly suggest you insulate the roof, sides, and floor of your vehicle, especially the floor, because a lot of the cold air is gonna actually come from underneath the vehicle, freeze the floor, and you're gonna lose a lot of heat that way. So insulation is very important and the type of insulation is very important. We're gonna take the next most important important thing outside and actually underneath the bus because if you want to live in the winter here's one thing that you definitely don't want to do what you definitely don't want to do is have exterior plumbing this is a really bad option now you really don't want to do this because when it gets cold there is no way to separate your water from the outside elements. So if it is 32 degrees or below, these tanks underneath my bus are going to freeze. So if you want to keep your water warm and safe during the winter, you want to keep your plumbing on the interior of the bus. I highly suggest you put it underneath a bed or a couch or in a cabinet and make sure that that space is not blocked off from the heat inside the bus and that air can actually flow into that cavity to make sure that that cavity is going to stay warm and not be subject to the exterior temperatures. Another thing about the water system is that you can consider wrapping your pipes with either heat coils or foam insulation. There's a lot of different ways you can keep your pipes warm. You want to keep them out of the exterior walls, try to keep them interior. And you also want to make sure that you protect all of your units, such as your water heaters, your water pumps, because if those freeze, they do have delicate parts in there, sometimes plastic parts, and they will break if they freeze even just a little bit. So you really want to protect your water system so that you don't have to consistently fix it every single spring like some people do. All right, so we've decided what type of heater we want. We've got awesome insulation, our water tanks are protected, but what do we do about these guys? So what I tend to do, and I know a lot of other people tend to do in their vans and buses, is we create insulated spaces. So this is my bedroom, and what I do is I close these. I put thicker curtains on these windows and create a little bit of a pocket of space that I heat and I actually don't heat the rest of the bus during the night so that all I have to do is worry about this space staying warm while I'm sleeping. Now there's a lot of other methods that you can use to do this. Some people put curtains across the front of their buses so that they can take a curtain from this side all the way to that side to block off the cabin space. Other people simply just put reflectics in the windows just to insulate them directly. But whatever way you want to do it, the most important thing is that you just think about how you're going to stop that air gap and how you're going to stop the cold air coming through that window and then entering your space as much as possible. So thicker curtains, air dams, reflectics, any type of thing that you can put up against the windows to prevent that heat loss. So the last thing that you're gonna to wanna to think about when trying to figure out how to live in the winter is actually the vehicle prep. So something that a lot of people don't think about is, well, I went to a cold climate, but I can't get my engine started because the engine block is frozen. So something you're gonna to wanna to look for is gonna be like an engine block heater. These things are gonna make sure that your engine can start in very cold temperatures. You can also look for diesel tank heaters, which are gonna keep your diesel tank warm so that when you're actually trying to start the engine, everything's already gonna be warm, just like you would if you started your car and let the car warm up. What this is gonna do is always keep it warm. The last thing to consider with the vehicle prep is gonna be possibly using a diesel additive because what you can do is go to any type of auto parts store, buy a diesel additive, pour it in the tank to whatever parts per gallon that you're gonna be using. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna protect your diesel throughout the winter. So that's pretty much the main things that I can think of to kind of give you suggestions on how you might be able to do vehicle prep and bus build prep or van bus prep for winter type travel. So go through those options, see which ones work for you and which ones are gonna work best. For me, I've gotta get all this stuff inside the school bus to start heading south, so I'm gonna to have to call this one an end, but I just wanna say thank you for watching. If any of you have any more suggestions for anyone watching this video, remember to leave them in the comments below. And if you like this video, remember to give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you wanna see more content. Until next time when I see you in warmer weather, thanks for watching.